Welcome to Corks and Conversation with A.G. Riddle. I'm so excited to talk with him today. I loved his book, Lost in Time. I'm holding it up here if you're watching this on YouTube. It's a gorgeous cover. I'm it's part it mystery, part sci-fi, and all the way thrilling. Yes, yes. And um, and I and I did love all the science in it, though yeah. I, th I think I sort of had like tr a trigger thing with some of my college physics struggles or something. <laughs> I don't know. It was it was hard on the brain, Kathy. Well, I hear you because time travel is some pretty mind bending stuff, um, but really fun to contemplate. And um, it's it's handled so well in this book. Yes. And so before we get started asking him all kinds of questions, um, let me tell everybody a little bit more about him. So A.G. Riddle spent 10 years starting internet companies before retiring to pursue his true passion, writing fiction. His novels have sold over 4 million copies worldwide and been translated into 24 languages. Um, he has several of his works also in development for feature films, which is very exciting. Lost in Time is, on my count, his 11th novel, and um, it came out September 1st, and it's already a bestseller with rave, rave reviews. Um, there was one that I particularly liked, a starred review from Publishers Weekly, calls it a Crichton-esque <laughs> thrillers don't come much better than this. And that's referring to Michael Crichton for those guys out there who don't know who wrote Jurassic Park and um, <laughs> so that kind of gives you an idea so A.G. Riddle grew up in Boiling, Boiling Springs North Carolina and graduated from UNC Chapel Hill I had to put that in there because that's my <laughs> alma mater and um, he started uh, during his sophomore year in college he started his first company with a childhood friend so that's interesting quite the difference and he currently lives in Raleigh North Carolina with his wife daughter and an eccentric dog <laughs> so Jerry it's so nice to have you with us today oh thank you for having me and we've added a son who's uh oh. one year one years old and uh, also eccentric so <laughs> okay and the good. dog is still in the picture so <laughs> well fantastic. there you go you got a full house there we do yeah <laughs> So that's why we're drinking wine, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, so we're all having, um, I don't know what you guys have, but I have the um, uh, Uno Malbec from Argentina. I just love this um, bottle. I think it's so beautiful. And I, nice. I like I like a Malbec. What do you guys yes. have? Uh, I'm just I'm just drinking a random red that I had. <laughs> I don't actually have the bottle by me, so I can't tell you. <laughs> But I well, had some. I, I have this eye tear. Oh. It, it comes highly recommended from the guy circulating at Total Wine and More. <laughs> oh, That's right. I don't drink a lot of wine, so I went in there and I was like, I need, I need a bottle of wine. <laughs> Anything will do. <laughs> and he said, you've come to the right place. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's the staff pick of Anthony here in Raleigh. Oh, okay. All right. If yeah. you know we Anthony don't... at the Raleigh North Hills Total yeah. Wine. Yeah, all right. Next time I'm up there, we might have an Anthony down here, too. I do find um, a lot of advice from my Total Wine folks, too. <laughs> I mean, so far, they're, you know, one for one, as, as far as I know. <laughs> well. <laughs> they're batting a thousand. This is yeah. impressive, yeah. <laughs> well, um, let's say cheers to you, Jerry, on this 11th novel release. It's a wild cheers. ride. <laughs> Thank you, ladies. Appreciate mm -hmm. it. I mean, they, okay. I wish I could say they keep getting easier with every novel, but when you got a one-year-old, it, it gets a lot harder. <laughs> one year yeah, old I can imagine. House. Yeah. Things I change. can't imagine, in other words. I, and when my kids were one, I would not have been able to write. No, no. Time okay, travel. so <laughs> I'm very excited to get in um, to all the questions with Jerry, but I think before we do that, let me give a quick synopsis of this incredible book. Um Lost in Time, again, is the title. Um, so here's the deal. Dr. Sam Anderson, Anderson excuse me, is one of the most celebrated scientists in history. Ten years ago, he invented a device that changed the world, and now his life is about to be ripped apart, and his own creation may be to blame. 
One fateful morning, Sam discovers that his girlfriend has been murdered and his daughter is accused of the crime. Sam believes she's innocent, but he can't prove it. And so the only, he does the only thing a dad can do. He confesses to the crime himself. Um, but in, in the future, murderers aren't sent to prison. They're sent to the past. And that's where his own invention, Absalom, the world's worst um, criminals are exiled forever, sent back to the time of the dinosaurs. There's the Michael So there's Crichton dinosaurs piece. in the book too. <laughs> yeah, it's huge. And we're, I'm a big dinosaur person, so I love that. So um, the criminals are sent back to the time of dinosaurs where they you know, live out their lives alone with the dinosaurs. Um, and so- And then he, the book's but, done. Right. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Um, Fade but, to black. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, he wants desperately to get back to his family, clear his name, find out who killed his girlfriend, um, protect his daughter, all of the things. And the daughter's on the same quest. So anyway, it's a fantastic book. Um, all right. The first thing I'm dying to ask you about is the time travel. I, I want to know what it was like to write this because... It's as a reader, you're not confused. I mean, but you are you are jumping centuries and so much going on, but it wasn't confusing at all. And the whole notion of time travel is wild. And so talk to us about your research and how you handled all this. We're just so curious. Well, I have to tell you, it was not effortless. It was extremely arduous and it was it was very difficult. And I told my wife, I, I wrote a time travel novel in 2014, it was published in 2015, and I told her then, I said, you know, I, I'm never writing a time travel novel again. God, these oh. things are so complex. It's so much work. It's just so many pages of timelines and things to keep up with. I mean, I'm, I'm really learning my lesson. So apparently, for me, like seven years is like the, the memory fades out, and I no <laughs> longer know what I have learned as lessons in life. So I guess... I'll probably write another one in 2029, maybe. Um, <laughs> but it, it to make it like you're talking about, where it's easy to follow, I think is really tough. And I think for me, it was just there's a lot of rewrites and a lot of, for me, just like thinking, gosh, you know, there's something gained here with all this detail, but maybe you take it out and it's easier for readers. And so I think it's an iterative process. And and obviously I had to write out all these timelines and all these things that happened. And I mean, you'd have to have like walls of it. I think. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, go ahead, that's Kat. a really good point because, you know, we talk to a lot of writers about different writing methods, right? The traditional pantsing plotting thing. I don't understand how you could create an entire world, create science, create um, inventions and, and, without being completely organized in your writing. Yeah. Well, I think that, you know, what is published, you know, is what is sort of the tip of the iceberg and, and a novel like Lost in Time, right? And so there's a lot that gets thrown out. And I think that, I think that writing a novel like that it probably plays to my strengths, which are, you know, to some extent research and planning. And I'm not a terribly organized person. My wife is very organized and, um, and that's why I, you know, beg her to stay married to me. Um, <laughs> and, but, you know, it's it's like you get do-overs before the book is published. So you can like, all right, well, I screwed that up. Let me go back and fix it and rewrites. And, yeah. you know, it becomes pretty difficult. But I, I do think it's worth it for the reader when you get these big reveals and things that really blow their mind and make them sort of see things in a different way. And that, I mean, for me as an author, I think, to some extent that's what it's about is those um those moments well it did it blew my mind <laughs> it, it did and then yeah. you know but i think about it and i'm like going how do you research this like do you just make it all up and this is all made up this or do, is there some sort of you know sci-fi group out there that you have to like read about their time travel so that you don't get something wrong. Like, I don't, I don't even know. Is there a standard or is it just all made up? <laughs> well, I think for a couple of things, I mean, one is that, so Adeline and some, some mild spoilers here, um, you know, the time travel, so we, we actually have two people in this book that experience time travel. And so obviously for 
for Sam Anderson, who goes back 200 million years in the, into the past um, to the dawn of the time of the dinosaurs. That was all research. And, and it was a lot of, and there's a lot of speculation because, you know, it's, um, when you go back that far, I mean, all, all we have are fossils at this point. I mean, what was fossilized? And we're sort of speculating a little about what the foliage was like and what the animals were like. And um, so that was research. And then what Adeline goes through is a period of time that I lived through. And so it's something that I, you know, couldn't recall with absolute accuracy. I had to look a lot of that up. But um, I think you can get the, the, the easy thing about writing the book is if you do the work, trying to get the facts right and you overlook some stuff in a, in a novel that long. But the other thing is like, I wanted to do a new twist on time travel of something that was sort of a closed loop in that you can't change the past. And if you change the past, it's not like back to the future where you come back and you have this awesome truck and your dad is, you know, different. It's sort of like <laughs> you, if you change the past, you blow up the future. So they had to, I yeah, that's the part by a that was set like, of rules. Ooh, yeah. yeah. That's hard. And that's something I haven't seen. I mean, as an author, I, I do try to do things that I haven't seen before that I think are pretty innovative. And, and so that was part of what got me excited about the story. Mm -hmm. um, Christy and I were talking today while we were getting ready um, and comparing what, you know, each of our takeaways were and what we loved. And um, I thought, I thought you would like to know this, that Christy both read the book hardcover, but also listened to it. And I think um, books can be experienced so differently in those different formats. And it sounds like it was great to listen yeah, to Yeah, it was well. great to listen to, yeah. Because, yeah. you know, I mean, it, we like to read all the books of the authors that we have on. So that's quite a lot of books. And, you know, this isn't a thin book by any means. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, I got to get a jump start on this. I can yeah. do this while I'm walking and stuff. So, yeah, I found myself trying to do things taking road trips just to listen and things like that <laughs> but but yeah it was great and I you know I really like the characters I, and that's something when we I think in my head because Kathy and I don't read a lot of like strict sci science fiction you know we're mostly crime fiction but we do dabble um, but I always think with science fiction it's just all about all this crazy technology but your your story is so character driven. I mean, I think yeah. that's what makes it really good at, for us to read as well, you know. But um, when you start out, do you say, okay, I want to do some kind of time travel, and you know, I have these, I got to think of some characters, or do you like, oh, I've got these great characters. What can I do to mess their lives up, and then do time travel? <laughs> How do you uh, how do you approach it, and what do you think about? That? That's a good question. I mean, I, I I'm a pretty big geek, so like the technology and the ideas are are really what are my entrance into the story and the things I start with. And then I I sort of think about you know who are the really interesting people that might be involved in this, and then I try to draw my own life. I mean, you know, I'm a dad now, and I have a daughter, and like what would terrify me? I mean, the other mm -hmm. things that terrify me now or things that you know are very different than 10 years ago or six years ago. Like, you know in 2017 I wrote a book called Pandemic and you know <laughs> I don't want to write about that anymore yeah. So, yeah, I guess. been there done that yeah so you know writing about a daughter uh, about a dad who's you know separated from his daughter and is fighting to save her life is is something that resonates with me and you know is something that I sort of have some insight about and I think can write authentically about uh, in terms of what the character's emotional arc is. And I, th I do think in science fiction, that is something we often miss. You know, we get, a, and, and I'm guilty of it too, we get caught up in the ideas or the world building and stuff like that. And we don't, we don't maybe invest enough in the characters. And so that's something as my career has gone on, like that's something I've tried to do more of and tried to grow uh, in that regard. So I, I generally come up with an idea and a, a broad arc for a story that I think is fresh or interesting. And then I try to populate it with, with characters that I want to know more about that I think are, you know, that person's interesting and you know, what, mm -hmm. what might they go through or what, you know, how could we surprise readers with, with what this person does. So, and eventually like, 
the thing I've found, like, you know, write my outline, but the characters always surprise me. And the, the, you know, the characters that you sort of envision as you put them on the page and they interact with other characters, you know, they change and evolve. And I think that's part of the fun of, of writing. Now, now, so do you like, do you have to go in a, do you write linearly, linearly, like in a straight line? In other words, because I'm like going, when did you realize I can't, we can't give anything away, but there were things that I was like, oh, did he know all along that this was going to be the case or, <laughs> or did he have to go back and make sure that they were true to form or something like that? The, there's a little of both. I mean, you know, the big reveals and the turns in the story, I, I generally know about, and I generally know of uh, the ending. I mean, I, when I set out to write a novel, I really want to know that there's a strong ending and something that, that I think readers at the end will think, well, you know, that was worth it. Like that was worth mm -hmm. going on that journey. And, um, you know, the, the most terrifying thing for me anyway, is like writing a book and people come to the end and think, ah, you know, that uh, was like what a waste <laughs> but um like if it just faded into the dinosaurs <laughs> yeah well the dinosaur that eats them. you're like oh it. okay <laughs> cool technology yeah. but <laughs> yeah. yeah all right let's take a little um minute to enjoy our wine and then we're going to get to we're about midway and we're going to ask you what we call the question in the bottle and it might be kind of a random question that you might get to at the end of a bottle <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. The question is, where would you go on vacation if you had no budget? No budget. Well, um, this is going to be somewhat cliche, but I'm not, not against cliches. Um, <laughs> I would probably take the kids to Disney, Disney World. <laughs> yeah. Because I think that, they would enjoy it. I mean, yeah. I know that's really played out. And no, that's a very new dad answer. That's what that yeah. is. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to Disney World. Very you know, it's I funny thought is... you'd be like, I'm gonna get, you know, go on uh, one of the space, go to space or something. You know. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, as a new dad, I think my wife would just be like, seriously, yeah. you're going. Yeah, to you're this is like so dangerous and ridiculous, and also <laughs> we're not taking the kids there. And that's really funny. Like, so what here... about you, Kathy? Well, I was just going to say that um, when our kids were little, they were four and five, my parents offered um, to take us on a trip, and they gave us a choice of a beach vacation or Disney, and my husband and I were like, um, beach. <laughs> <laughs> and my sister had the same option, and they chose Disney. <laughs> and, oh, that's funny. Mm -hmm. It and just my reveals daughters, character, doesn't it? Yeah, well... My, when my daughters found out about that a few years later, they were like, um, why did you do that? Anyway. Um, well, Disney was, Disney was an easy one for me because I'm in Florida. Yeah. I worked yeah. at Disney when I was like 18. So I'm. When, in South Dakota, you have so many beach options. So. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. I got the beach too. I guess. I, where am I going to go? Yeah. I guess. I'm going to Australia. Oh, without well, you, Australia, pick? New Zealand, yeah. Um, I, I think Australia is surrounded by beaches. I think so. <laughs> My wife's and sister reefs. lives there. Really? Oh, really? I haven't done any research on it, but you know, have I you visited? Nice. No, I haven't. <laughs> Anna and uh, our daughter were gonna go, but then this COVID thing happened, and they were. Oh, like, mm. yeah. I, you know, I think I would. Um, I think like a um, safari. I think like a African oh, I'd let, I'll do that too. I'll do yeah, that. Yeah, we want to do that. Yeah, I would do that. Yeah, I think that sounds really fun. Or you could just go to Animal Kingdom at Disney. <laughs> I mean, it's they have awesome. a safari there, and it's great. <laughs> <laughs> it's highly convenient. I'll just add. Um, yeah, <laughs> much more budget friendly, I would say. Also, <laughs> anyway. I agree. All right, so let's get on with the okay, real questions. Okay. All right, so. Um, Back you started really, really from uh, from scratch on in self publishing on Amazon, and can you tell a little bit uh, our listeners a little bit about how it was at the beginning and that what did you do? I mean, when your books became so successful, I mean, how what happened? <laughs> yeah, so I mean, you know, I started a company in college and did that, and 
I sort of burnt out on it. And I also felt like I haven't, I had not really found the thing that that was meant to do in life. And like, I loved reading and, and science fiction in particular. And, and I told my wife, I was, you know, I'm going to take some time off and write this book and just kind of see what happens. And I was fairly financially secure. So I had some time to figure it out. And, you know, it took two and a half years to write my first book. And I didn't know really anything about publishing. So the idea of finding an agent or submitting to a publisher was was not something I had any inclination for or knowledge about. So, but I knew a lot about putting things on the internet and seeing if people liked it. So, oh. mm -hmm. so I, I mean, that's something that I felt very comfortable about. And I also wanted to figure out if this is something I should be doing. And my wife just thought I was going crazy, like writing this book for two and a half years in isolation. She's like, this is not normal. You see, they need to do this and move on, you know, or, or you know, figure out if this is going to go somewhere. So I, you know, put the book on Amazon, I self published it. And, um, I mean, things just kind of took off from there. I mean, the book sort of had a life of its own and it did a lot better than I thought it was going to. Like, I was really proud of that book and, and continue to be proud of like that was the best book I could write back then. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I self-published and, and now I've gotten to a point where, you know, I have two kids and, you know, it's like publishing has changed a lot. And so now I, my UK publisher who's published me since my first book, I like have only ever self-published in the U S in ebook and I've never like self-published an audio book or anything like that. So I basically, talk with them and my agent and said, look, I'd love for you guys to take over, you know, all the publishing stuff and I'll just write the books and, mm -hmm. and that's what I'm doing now. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's enough. <laughs> that's it is. Enough. It's a lot. Yeah. So even with your natural finesse of online marketing and world, um, you know, experience, it just, was easier to say, could someone else just take that piece of it out? Because just of the self-promotion that you have to do? I mean, does that work or what? Yeah, I think so. Well, I think there's a few things. One is that, you know, the market has changed a lot since 2013 when I published. I mean, I think like when I self-published, you know, there were a lot less books, mm. you know, on the market at, you know, certain price ranges. Yeah. I also think the marketing landscape was very different. You know, today it's it's a lot about self-promotion on social media. It's a lot about paid ads and and things where I don't think I'm quite as strong. Like I don't have, I'm not a terribly social person like this. I'm not on TikTok. I'm not going to be making eight oh, videos. Oh, just wait. Your daughter's a little too young, but just oh. wait. <laughs> I mean, it's like they're the only ha hope I have of social media. <laughs> Um, presence, but if they want to get into it, we'll do it. But, but I think that, you know, for me anyway, it's like, there's a reason for specialization. Like there, there are these mm -hmm. publishers or organizations that uh, specialize in the supply chain of physical books, which, you know, we have a warehouse and we were printing books and sending them to Amazon and all that stuff. But I was like, you know, I don't, I don't think this is necessarily the business we want to be in. Like I right. want to be in the business of writing great books and I want to be focused hundred percent on that and my mm -hmm. family. And I have this publisher who I think is very good and very good at the things they do, which are keeping up with TikTok and ads and <laughs> how to run a Facebook ad, which is something I don't know about, but yeah, right. I guess I, I would say that I'm sort of aging out of, you know, knowing about being a specialist in that stuff. Yeah. And I'm more a specialist in writing books at this point. Mm -hmm. I love the, um, I love becoming more and more self-aware about what, how you want to spend your time and what you really are good at and then what other people are better at than you. Like that's yeah. a real, um, mm -hmm. so that's part of being married, I think. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so you, you must've had to get an agent. Like how did, when did, um, Hollywood start calling or whatever it, was that before you had an agent or after or how did both? Yeah. I mean, wow. so I got an agent pretty early. Like my first book became, um, to everyone's surprise, very successful. And I got, um, an agent, a big agent in New York from a big agency and they just didn't do much for me. And then 
I cut them loose and I got an agent in Taipei that, that represented me in Asia for translation. And he did an amazing job and was, and continues to be my agent there for Asian area rights. And he introduced me to my New York agent who does Europe and then North Mm -hmm. America. And then the first Hollywood rights I sold, I I was living down in Florida in Parkland, Florida. And my neighbor was an inner, like uh, CBS films contacted me to, to option um, the Atlantis trilogy. And I, I knew nothing. I was like, I need you to talk with these people and you negotiate this i remember sitting in his home office and the way he was talking there i was like god you know this is so aggressive and let's just you know dial it down <laughs> but it's right just a- like yeah i wouldn't know that that's what that's when you need a tough person right yeah and he was a tough person um and <laughs> but yeah so now i'm not heavily involved in that stuff but the agents I I think I released my book at a good time in which agents were looking for, and agents continue to look for promising young debut authors, but, you know, they they sort of found me from the bestseller list. Mm -hmm. That's Um, great. And they've regretted it ever since. (laughs) You know, um, what you just said really um, reminds me, I was on your website and you have some tips for new writers and for... Um, and I, I thought, I thought one of, first of all, I think that's a lovely thing to do, like, because writers love reading that. Everyone has different experiences, but you always can, you know, read and learn, take, take away what you will from it. But you had said the best kind of marketing you can do is just to have a better product, right? To write a better book. And I, I don't know if I've ever heard a writer say that. And so I was wondering if you could um, talk to us about that a little bit. Well, I'll tell you, it's not popular advice. Like, it's not <laughs> what folks want to hear. I mean, um, but I, I do think that, you know, for all of us, we have a certain amount of talent. And there's not a lot you can do about that. But there is, you know, what you can do is is develop it. And you can work hard. Like, you know, if you're not the best dialogue writer in the world, you can get some better. But you're never going to be the greatest writer of dialogue. Mm-hmm. And so I think that, my my view is that as an author and as a person working in any field, it's sort of you figure out what your strengths are and you lean into those. And it's like, that's what you need to play towards. And then, you know, whatever your limitations are, you know, you can get better at them and you can work around them, but that, you know, that's, that's like what the job is. And I think that um, if you're writing these books that are like special to you, you know, we, we talked about like loss in time. Like, why was this interesting to me? Well, I love, I love time travel. I hate how hard it is to write. And I'll, <laughs> after seven years, I apparently forget how hard it is to write and write another one. But, and then I try to find characters that are, you know, interesting to me and have some part of me. And I, I do think it, that it hurts you as an author. Cause like, you know, when people put the book down, it's like, it gets a little more personal and you're hurt more, but I mean, it's the job too. Like you have to, you have to basically get to a point where you're okay with that. Cause if you're not, you're not going to keep writing. But anyway, mm-hmm. yeah, I think that, that writing the best books that you can is the wind at your back. And I mean, that, that to me is the whole thing. And that's what I'm trying to do. And I think the most successful um, authors that we've spoken with, all of them, always talk about how they're just they continue to work on their craft and work on their craft yeah. and mm-hmm. you just have to it's you know it's like a weightlifter or something you just have to keep doing it you know you stop and those muscles go away and yeah it's like interesting so where are you working on now all right so i have a new book coming out in march um, oh my gosh and it's actually a book that I wrote before Lost in Time. It's the first book in a series. And so I'm working on the second book in that series. Oh. And it's highly Not complicated, time too. Not like, I don't learn lessons. Like, I just <laughs> continue to put myself through so much pain. <laughs> but your readers must know that's exactly what they're signing up for when they, get, when they, when they order your books. And that's... Yeah. You know, it's hard. It would be hard to make a turn because that's what comes naturally to you, and they love it. So you're kind of yeah, you're kinda I, in yeah. It, man. I, I, it's gonna be hard. You got a one year old. It's they're gonna be moving around. <laughs> you have like a you have good locks on your doors and stuff, so you can a be a lot like of poopy working. diapers around here. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
<laughs> okay, so before we go, Christy has a final question for you. Oh, yes. Um, so we ask this of all our authors, and the question is, which of your characters would you like to share a meal with, and what would it be? Oh, wow. Um, gosh, that's a great question. Um, well, you know, I think it would be Sam Anderson, because we're both dads. We'd have a lot to talk about. And I think I think we would just do, like, maybe a steak and a baked potato. And again, Ugh. I'm not opposed to the cliche, and I just mm -hmm. I, I, t I just go in on it. So yeah. that that sounds really good. It does sound right really now. Good. I'm kind of hungry. <laughs> um, I when I first read the premise for the book, I kept thinking about a TV show that was on Saturday mornings when I was little. Um, was it Land Before? No, um, Lot. Um, where this family got trapped back with a bunch of dinosaurs. And like yeah you know, what was that was land before time or something like that wasn't it or i don't know shoot i wish i could think of it, it was lost a in time I don't, know. <laughs> I don't know but i i but i i love the dinosaur i love the time travel and this completely did not disappoint so well thank you yeah i told yeah. my agent when you know, i called him up i was like danny i have a new book and he said you know what is this book about and i was like you know it's, it's got a bunch of dinosaurs in it. and he was like well just send me that manuscript I'll just take that. He didn't now. even want to know anything more. And oh, you're like, kidding me. Wow. There's like so much more, Danny. Like, you know, this is cutting edge technology and a family drama. And he's like, yeah, just send me the dinosaurs. I want the dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> well, well I, I can see this one as a movie for sure. Oh, God. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Um, so, when our listeners have questions or want to learn more about you, what's the best way for them to find you? Uh, agriddle.com and the easiest way is a griddle which a lot of people have gotten <laughs> on to so agriddle.com i'm and waiting for the griddle that. people to come to me for a sponsorship yeah but, there you on, go bring it on. <laughs> <laughs> well this has been a lot of fun and we are so um thankful for you to join us in your busy life and um i guess we should Just all we have to do cheers. is a toast to future success. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you, ladies.